Well, let's get more now from Clementine Logan. She is live for us from Madagascar's capital and Tananarivo. Clem, what's the latest there? Do we have clear front runners yet? Well, Panina, it's steady uh, uh, but slow progress here at the Independent National Election Commission uh, where teams are on constant rotation as they, they count and verify those votes that are coming in electronically. Now, there are no um, uh, ways to tell, there are no exit polls to tell us how to predict what exactly will happen, but from the votes that have come in so far, it does look like Dr. Jean-Louis Robinson is faring quite well with around 27%. Now, he's the official candidate of ousted President Mark Ravalamanana, and he's also the former uh, Minister of Sports and Health. He commands quite a strong base. Just this afternoon, he addressed large crowds of his supporters who were chanting President. Now, on the other side... Things are a little bit less clear about who among those several candidates that appeared to have the backing of transitional President Andrew Rajalina uh, might make it through to that second round, but tipped as a favorite among them is Eri Rajauna Amampianina, the former finance minister who's coming in second with around 15%, and just behind him, former Prime Minister Camille Vital with about 9%. Uh, now, it could be more than a week before we start to get a clear picture of who's going to make it through to that second round in December. So we waiting to hear a little bit more about that uh, but what we do know is that the Senate here has only gotten through about 366 of the 20,001 polling stations across the country. Panina. Now Clem, as we saw there, a lot of challenges ahead for Madagascar's new leader. What are the front runners promising to do if they reach office? Well, their priorities are all quite similar, um, as you heard there in that report, to create much needed jobs, get the economy back on track, but also um, improve access to health care uh, and education. Um, as you heard, a lot of children out of school since the crisis began in, around two, uh, in 2009, uh, an estimate of around 500,000. It's important to remember that a lot hinges on this election being deemed credible and transparent uh, if Madagascar is to regain that international financial support that it needs to recover from this protracted crisis. Uh, some people I spoke to are concerned that in that second round, the way things are going, uh, although it's very early stages, that in that second round we'll essentially see two camps facing off, uh, one backed by the Ravalamananas and on the other, uh, Rajalina. No one here wants to see a repeat of that power struggle that plunged the country into chaos in 2009. So there have been a lot of appeals by international observers for a Pacific electoral process. If anyone wants to contest those results, that they're done through legal channels so that Madagascar can begin to regain that investor and donor confidence that it so badly needs to recover. Panina. All right, Clementine Logan, live for us from Antananarivo.